Welcome back to the conversation. This is your space pod for Thursday. Jared, uh, there's a lot of question marks in this title. What I, what the Falcon is happening? Okay, so uh, every once in a while the universe kind of throws us a curveball, um, but this one's not really a curveball. This one's kind of like a fastball because it's 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 a very fast object. So really bizarre. This is a, an actual one of a kind object that's currently cruising through our solar system. Uh, it was spotted by the Pan-STARRS telescope. Oh, which, this is the, can I have this on a t-shirt please? Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. And this is just data uh, from, this is this is an optical view of that object uh, that we're looking at uh, from the Virtual Telescope Project, by the way. That's uh, amazing. Which is, which is very cool. Uh, which is which did not spot this object. It was spotted by the Pan-STARRS telescope, which Pan-STARRS, for those of you keeping the acronym score uh, out there, is the Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System. Uh, uh, great acronym. And yeah, uh, uh, this telescope is sp specifically supposed to look for near-Earth objects. And the data from the observations of this object, which we initially called C2017U1, made no sense whatsoever. Um, it, we found it at about 26 million kilometers away from the Earth. And the object is apparently outbound on its orbit, which is not unusual to find things that are on their way out uh, of, of, uh, from their closest approach to the solar system. Mm -hmm. um, but it was traveling at like 40 kilometers a second, and that's really unusual. That's this object is moving so fast that it's gonna it's overcome the gravitational pull of the sun. It is it's not just outbound, it's leaving our solar system and it's never coming back. Huh. So what they did is they grabbed some more images of it and they figured out its orbital parameters, mm -hmm. and it came in from nearly above the solar system, what we call the solar apex. And it came in at a velocity well above that of what we would expect of a typical comet. So that means that this could potentially be an interstellar object, something zipping through our own solar system, but its origins are outside of our solar system. Hmm. Now, the difficulty of building up speeds as fast as this object is moving, just by natural interaction with objects in our own solar system are extremely low. And as you can imagine, when they published the orbital parameters of this object, it caused a, a tremendous amount of attention to come towards it. Uh, and it currently has the highest, what we call, orbital eccentricity of any object ever calculated within our solar system. And just a little quick thing to sort of give you some factoids. Mm -hmm. uh, for it. Orbital eccentricity is a measurement of how much a body in orbit deviates from a perfect circle. So if you have zero eccentricity, you have a perfect circle. Mm -hmm. Anything between zero and one is an elliptical orbit, which mm -hmm. is basically what most things are in. Mm -hmm. uh, w one itself, one uh, eccentricity, uh, is an orbit on an escape trajectory, so you're outbound. Anything above one, is what we call a hyperbolic orbit. That means you're not just outbound, you are like good and gone outbound. Okay. And this object has an orbit of 1.19, so it's above <laughs> hyperbolic. Now we called it C2017U1. Oh, here's a great animation um, of the object coming in. This animation lasts 500 years, by the way. It comes in and it, boom, it's out of here. Dang. So it just makes a complete about face. Um, now we actually called this object C, 2017U1 mm -hmm. as a cometary designation because of its orbit, but the observations that we've done so far show no coma or material coming off and gathering around uh, what would be the nucleus of the comet. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, we reclassified an object from comet to asteroid. So now it is a 2017U1. They're going to do additional observations uh, by ground-based telescopes and the Hubble Space Telescope as well. They've gotten time on it. And early spectral data from a 2017 U1 indicates that it is red in color, much like many of the Kuiper Belt objects in our own solar system, and its surface is relatively featureless. There's nothing that we can make out. Um, it's not very big either. Um, they, they haven't pinned down an exact size yet, but it's definitely under one kilometer in size. Hmm. So it's not a big object. Okay. Now, there's likely been a lot of these kinds of objects that just come into our solar system from interstellar space and then zip through. But the thing is, they, we haven't had, they probably haven't come as close to the sun as this object has, which then allows it to reflect more light and allow us to actually see it. But it's a classic trajectory of what we would consider an interstellar object coming into the solar system and coming out. And this is what we would expect from the formation of a, of a star and anything around it. Um, because even when we model our own solar system, uh, Jupiter and Saturn, they fling things out into interstellar space um, because things get close and they move at a fast 
fast enough velocity, they overcome the gravitational pull of the sun, and they get flung out. Um, so this is not necessarily what we would call unprecedented in terms of of does this actually happen? Yeah, it does. It's expected that, that uh, interstellar objects are, are out there. It's just that we've never had the opportunity to actually look at an interstellar object. Um, and this is very, very exciting. And uh, it's going to give us a little, potentially, if it is an interstellar object, a little sample of what, uh, what objects are c composed of out there. And then we can look at that compared to what we expect with our models and see if our models are correct, modify them if need be, and uh, go from there. So. Super exciting science yeah. happening in real time. So, so for the t-shirt for this is like I was a fan of A twenty seventeen U one when it was C twenty seventeen U one. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Pretty right. good stuff. So cool. <laughs> Double checking. <laughs> All right. So if uh, this kind of information still interests you and lots of other spacey goodness, feel free to, just, so, to subscribe to our channel. And if you want more and would like to live and interact with us, feel free to join us every Saturday at 1800 UTC.